and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with a Herodian, saying, Teacher, we know you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this? And whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Conventional wisdom tells us that it's a, not a good idea to mix religion and politics. It's problematic to assume that God endorses a particular political candidate or platform. Yet, we do encourage involvement in our communities and in the process. So what is that balance? Well, the exchange that Jesus has about the coin raises some important questions. Questions about obedience, loyalty, and authority, which exemplifies the fact that faith has an inescapable political dimension, but not a partisan one. You see, this particular story comes at the end of quite a, a long group of controversies that Jesus has been having with the religious authorities. They've been testing Jesus' authority, trying to figure out exactly how to um, get around what he's saying. And it's interesting because the two groups that come before Jesus at this time actually cross the aisle. They are not allies. They are on opposite sides of this particular issue. Yet, they both are looking to entrap Jesus in what he says. So he knows how fraught this conversation really is. No matter what Jesus said, whatever he answered, one group is going to say, aha! And so, Jesus is kind of between a rock and a hard place. You see, the Pharisees, as religious leaders, had a real problem with this coin. It was problematic because the coin had a picture of Caesar. And it basically said, Caesar is God. Caesar is divine. And as religious leaders, this was problematic in a, on a couple of fronts. One, it claimed Caesar's divinity. And two, it's a graven image. So this was in two ways, blasphemous. So as religious people, the Pharisees would not have been particularly happy about this coinage. Now, we don't know that all the Pharisees were nationalists, but if they were, any of those who were of a more nationalist bent saw the humiliation of the people of Israel at the hands of Rome. You see, Rome had a tax on every person. They called it the census, but it was a tax on every man, woman, child, slave, that all of the children of Israel 
had to pay as tribute to Rome, who was oppressing them. So this was a this was a problematic thing politically as well. So had Jesus said, "Yes, you pay taxes," they would have said, "Well, he's capitulating with the Romans." Now the Herodians, on the other hand, supported Herod, and all of Herod's power came from Rome. So they were had a little bit of a different relationship with Rome. They didn't see them so much as the oppressors, but this is a way to get a little bit of power. And so they would have been absolutely okay with the tax. So if Jesus had said okay with the tax, they would have probably felt okay. But if he had said uh, no, well then he is treasonous. There's no way Jesus was going to be able to win to this. And then remember that Matthew, the writer of Matthew, is writing to yet another context. So first we have the context of the story, and then we have this other layer of the context of the writing, and then we have our own context over top of that. But that second context, so the Gospel according to Matthew is written to a pretty new church. You see, most of the people in this group following Jesus of Nazareth had come, had been a Jewish, and they had decided that they saw Jesus as Messiah. They really didn't say themselves as Christians yet. They were Christians and Jewish. They were both. They had dual membership. And so there was a constant struggle that this community was having with how much do they keep from the old tradition? And what's jettisoned? And how do they live as Christ's followers? And the truth is, this isn't a binary decision. This is a very nuanced decision. And it's complicated. So Jesus' answer, which doesn't take either side, is actually helpful. Jesus doesn't jettison the law. He doesn't say, just throw everything out and forget about the past. Instead, Jesus says, render to Caesar what is Caesar's, and render to God. Is God. Because both the Herodians and the Pharisees would have known the scripture. The earth is the Lord and all that lives in it. Everything is under the authority of God. And so he's telling them just remember where your loyalty lies. Now, throughout Matthew, Jesus has really gotten in trouble when he has not taken uh, the, he, the, the religious authorities would like him to take the letter of the law. And Jesus, Jesus interprets the spirit of the law. So he gets in trouble because he heals on the Sabbath. And Jesus says, God's law was never meant to keep us from healing. Jesus feeds on the Sabbath, makes sure that there are no hungry people, and picks grain on the Sabbath, and they say, oh my goodness, you know, what is he doing? He's doing awful things. And Jesus says, okay, you're getting caught up in the letter of the law. You're taking this really literally. And God's mercy God's law is always about being merciful and reaching out to the oppressed, healing the sick, comforting the lonely, being with the afflicted. So when it comes to healing and feeding, showing mercy, God's ultimate loyalty 
or the ultimate loyalty reminds us that the earth is God's and all that lives within it. And Jesus says, render to Caesar what is Caesar's. This is not escapist. It's not just a way to get around an answer. But it's an acknowledgement that we live in a world with various commitments. And these usually are not necessarily binary choices. Jesus is telling us, use God's word. Use the good news of God as guidance. He reminds us that we have political commitments. We have a job as citizens in the world to participate in a community. However, he does not conflate partisan politics or ideologies with God's will. There's this constant challenge of life seeking God's merciful will and live rendering the ultimate authority to God. It's not easy, but if everything that we are and everything that we have, we owe to God. It reminds us that God has our ultimate loyalty and God's mercy has the last word. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
God. And remember that God's mercy is everlasting. As you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Alleluia. Amen. Grace to